Okay, so my name is Hath Catherine Hegevish, and I'm here today with um, Britta Doderd and Donnie Van Sant. Um, you might raise your hand. I see them right there. And I'm here to talk to you about a product that we've been developing at the University of Idaho and the Desert Research Institute called Climate Engine. Um, and this product utilizes Google Cloud Computing to aid in the visualization of, um, of uh, remote sensing and um, observational data sets to answer a whole slew of scientific questions. This project started in summer of 2014 um, when we received a Google Faculty Research Award for our two institutions led by Justin Huntington and John Abatsaglu, and our Google contact is Tyler Erickson, just to acknowledge him also. Um, and we went to develop a tool that could be used by anyone to visualize real-time global climate and remote sensing data sets. Um, we've now been working on this project for the last eight months and have new funding to continue this effort in a couple of different directions, including starting some decision support tools based on this data. So. There are two main pieces to um, Climate Engine. The first is a mapping interface, which I'm showing here. Um, and you can see that we have uh, lots of different options where the user can actually select um, one of uh, five different data sets, um, including Landsat and MODIS. GridMed is also on here, and the CHIRPS and the CFSR reanalysis data set. Um, and for variables, um, some of the examples of the variables that can be selected are precipitation, temperature, some different indices for applications, such as monitoring snow, fire, drought, um, things along those lines. And we allow the user to select their different calculations and different date ranges. And all these selections that the users make are supported on the back end by functions from the Earth, in, the Earth Engine API. And you can see that the result then from this part of the interface is um, if the user selects get map layer, they get a map layer on a Google map. And so this example right here, it. Um, is total precipitation from the last 60 days, and it shows um, over the United States, it shows that really big, the flooding in Texas, the epic flooding that's been happening in, across Texas. Um, yeah. And to show off some of the science that can be visualized with this tool, um, you can see on the left, um, I'm visualizing decreases in the snowpack in the Sierra Nevadas here in California. The red represents decreases in that snowpack compared to, um, of 2015 compared to an 11 year average. Um, so it's a way to visualize that snowpack. Um, um, also on the right, um, we're visualizing drought through the Palmer Drought Severity Index, which is a measure of soil moisture. And you can see here, um, Roughly, uh, the way you can interpret this is that um, most of California is um, three to six standard deviations below normal in soil moisture, kind of indicating a level of the, the, drought, the exceptional drought that they're experiencing. Um, and some of the different tools that we have in our interface, we have the ability to mask out regions there and um, also change the color bar and overlay state layers. So those are some examples um, that our tool will provide. Um, and the second part of our map, our interface is a time series interface, which supports the visualization, download, and display of time series data. So we actually have the same selections, um, basically, you can make as the mapping interface. And um, you can display a time series um, for up, you can select up to five points, and you can also select up to five regions that come from a fusion table. Um, and we customize that a little bit to help the user that doesn't know what a fusion table is also. Um, and the time series then is visualized on a high charts um, display, and we actually have the data in a data window too. There's three different visualizations of our time series. Um, that ends my lightning talk. Thank you. Any questions?